cherish an image of Holland as a gentle miniature land of placid waterways, quaint bridges, toy town architecture and windmills, well you've come to exactly the right place. The Openlucht Museum Park near Arnhem by the Dutch-German border is Holland in microcosm with some of the very best examples of the old heritage. But there's nothing gentle or miniature about the eight contestants who've come here to do battle for the Homelink Trophy and the title Europe's Strongest Man. And the competitors are from Austria, Franz Bierbaum. From Sweden, Leif Vigholm. From Holland, Case de Vrucht. And from Iceland, John Paul Sigmarsson. From Great Britain, the current title holder, Geoffrey Capes. From Holland, Simon Wolfse. From Switzerland, Heinz Stettler. And finally, from Scotland, Jack Hein. And you could hardly imagine a more Dutch event than this. Towing a seven foot long canal boat weighing well over half a ton up a one in 15 slope for 12 meters against the clock in two man heats. This is the kind of event in which Jeff Capes is usually unbeatable. But with so many variables here, all bets are off. The only thing that's certain about this event is that it will be a very severe test. Bye. For Jeff Capes, this is his ninth major strongman competition, and he's quickly in the lead. Unlike the usual towing events, there's no build-up of momentum here. Every step of the way is harder than the last. Leif Vigholm, the Swedish super heavyweight powerlifter, is making heavy weather of this. He's only just got the boat out of the water. Jeff is there, the time 39.56 seconds. Although he doesn't seem too pleased about it, and Vigholm is still battling away. And that bang means he's run out of time and his final position will be marked. Jeff, in your time, I've seen you haul giant American trucks. I've seen you pulling tram cars. How does this compare? I'd rather pull giant American trucks and tram cars, to be honest with you. Um, in the beginning, when the, it was in the water, it was lovely. All of a sudden, when you get it up to the dry part of the wood, it's like two frictionless surfaces together with no lubrication at all. So I just had to pull, you know, two legs together each time just to get it moving, moving, you know. and. Uh, very, very difficult. But I think the time will be beaten because the more time the boat goes up and down, the more water gets on the track, so therefore the more lubrication. Well, we'll just have to wait and see if that happens. Jeff, no, congratulations. See. Franz Bierbaum of Austria against local hero Simon Wolfse. Now, both these men competed in last year's European competition, and Wolfse is the man who looks as if he's benefited the most from the experience. Wolfser has an extremely vocal fan club. The former docker from Rotterdam was runner-up to Jeff Cates last year, and he's obviously trained very hard for this year. He relies on what he calls his primitive power, and I'm not prepared to argue with that. And he puts up a better time than Jeff Capes, 39.34 seconds. And Franz Bierbaum hears the welcome, time gentlemen please, of that gun. One of David Attenborough's friends in the crowd, and he's a member of the Wolfse fan club. Now a couple of the more interesting characters here. The handsome Heinz Stettler of Switzerland, and a member of the four-man Bob team who won the world championship last year. And he's taking on John Paul Sigmarsson of Iceland. Sigmarsson is the youngest competitor. He's very big, powerful, and extremely athletic. Oh, 
and the young Icelander has more than a hint of the old berserker fury of his Viking ancestry. But Stettler is finding this event not at all to his liking. A few well-chosen Viking imprecations and Sigmarsson his home. His, the time is 42.10 seconds. But Stettler, I think, would much rather be hurtling down slopes than slogging his weary way up them as he hears the gun. Another interesting character, a butcher to trade, Kestevrucht of Holland, who takes on Scotland's Jack Hind, an amiable fellow from Edinburgh, who is runner-up in Britain's strongest man. The setting is tranquil, but the competition is fierce. So let's see if the Cape's theory about the slipway getting easier as it gets wetter really works. Scotland versus Holland, Hind versus De Vrucht. And as ever, Jack Hind gives it a go, but De Vrucht is a very formidable challenger with massive upper body strength and a physique very reminiscent of Bill Kazmaier, the reigning world's strongest man. Jack Hind being roared on there by Jeff Capes. And De Vrucht finishes, but it's over a minute, 61.20 seconds. Jack Hine, the man to finish whatever he starts, 77.17. And after the first event of boat towing, Jeff Capes, the defending European strongest man champion, already knows that he's got a battle on his hands. As you can see, this young man, John Paul Signerson from Iceland, is serving notice that he's in in this fight, and the local hero, Simon Wolfse, powerlifter from Holland, already serving notice to Jeff, coming up with maximum points of eight. And as we move location to the second event, there are times in this open-air museum where you feel you've wandered into a Vermeer painting. This event is basically a deadlift, but in a land famous for its dairy produce, the Dutch have worked out their own variant on it. It takes the form of a milk float heavily loaded with these very heavy churns. And as the competition goes on, more and more churns are added. The idea is for the competitors to lift the float off the ground, locking out the legs. Obviously an event of main strength, but one in which good technique is absolutely vital. Stettler and Bierbaum are already out of the reckoning as we join the competition with Jeff Capes attempting 280 kilograms. That's 617 pounds. Jeff, with his eye to all the demands that lie ahead, decides that he'll settle for that mark. Now Jack Hind at 315 kilograms. Jack, as an Olympic lifter, has good basic technique, but you can see the problem here. As he bends his knees, the bar comes right under the kneecap. Well, no lift, but was Jack pleased with his overall performance? Well, I had to get rid of the, the two, the Austrian and the, the other boy, what's yeah. his name? Uh, beer bomb. Yes. The Swiss boy, so um, was, uh, that, that's me in fifth there. So, so justify I had it. to justify the, the fifth place at least. I was hoping for fourth, but, well. Now, of those who are left, who do you still raise? Oh, this, this boy here. This, John Paul Sigmund. Uh, yeah, must be. John Paul? Jack Hind here has just picked you as the, the man most likely to win this event. What do you say to that? Uh, I'm far from my best form, but I am still strong in deadlift. So who do you see as your main opposition now in uh, this event? Uh, Wigholm from Sweden, I think. He's the man you've got to beat? Yeah. Okay, good luck with that. Thank you. So it's left to the four powerlifters to battle it out. Here's Sweden's Leif Vigholm going at 365 kilograms. And it's oh so easy. While invoking the help of Odin, or maybe he's just saying hello, Mom in Icelandic, here goes Sigmarsson at 370 kilograms, 815 pounds. Oh! <laughs> 
and John Paul decides he's not all that fond of milk anyway. Willed on by his wife Babs, Simon Wolfser attempts 375 kilograms. That's 826 pounds. And Seaman decides that will do him nicely, a secure third place. So it's down to the Swede Vigholm and the massive Dutchman De Vrucht, who's going for 390 kilograms, that's 860 pounds. Great lifting. Well, can the big Swede beat that? The weight is now 395 kilograms. That's 62 stones. This to take the lead. Ready? Lift! Well, not to be. Bigholm concedes the victory to De Vrucht and things are looking decidedly rosy for the Dutch. De Brucht gaining the maximum eight points and looking very strong indeed as the powerlifters have it all to themselves at the top of the table. Jeff Capes find himself way down the ratings. The overall scoreboard tells the same story. The two local heroes on top of the heap with John Paul Sigmarsson of Iceland looking menacing in third place and Capes ominously only fourth. Event number three, and already defending champion Jeff Capes is beginning to do some nervous arithmetic. Simon Wolfs, the local man, is ahead, but this is an event in which Jeff has always done very well indeed. It's a race, I suppose you could call it, an obstacle race. And the obstacles are these two motor cars that you see there. The first one weighs 1,400 pounds, the second weighs 1,800. Let's see if big Jeff can reassert his authority in this whole competition. And first to go, Simon Wolfser against the athletic Heinz Stettler of Switzerland. Well, no problem with the first car for Wolfser, who's looking better and better. And Stettler's not all that far behind. This track is on an upward slope, which makes the turning over of the second car a real test. And Stettler looks as if he's decided not to be a mechanic after all. Now, if both fail to turn over the second car, it's the time of touching it that'll count. And Wolfson decides that maybe a jack would be a better idea. <laughs> Jeff Capes does an interview for the Barbara Woodhouse programme while he waits. <laughs> Now Jack Hind of Scotland takes on the rapidly emerging showman of this competition, Iceland's John Paul Sigmarsson. And if this turns out to be a sprint to the second car, I know who my money would be on. Now Sigmarsson has the height and the leverage and the explosive strength to do this. It's a very much tougher proposition for Hind at 5 foot 11, the shortest man in the competition. And Sigmundson decides it's just not going to turn over and settles for his Charles Atlas impression instead. His time, 8.2 seconds to touch the second car. Very fast indeed. So it's De Vrucht versus Jeff Capes. Now this should be a good event for Jeff, who can sprint with the best of them. And Capes touches the second car in an astonishing 7.92 seconds and De Vrucht was only just behind him. But De Vrucht is trying to get a rocking motion going in an attempt to defeat this slope, and it might just work. And the second cars have defeated everyone. And one final go from Jeff. No. First win and maximum points for Jeff Capes, and it was his speed that earned him the points. 
De Brucht is hot on his heels and the ever-present Sigmarsson in third place. Wolfse slipping into fourth. And it's still De Vrucht in the lead with the other Dutchman Wolfse in second place. And it's beginning to look like a four-horse race between these two, Jeff Capes and John Paul Sigmarsson. Jeff, I was suggesting before that event that you would be beginning to do some nervous arithmetic, were you? Very much so. And uh, obviously this event um, tends to lean towards the powerlifters. But being, in fact, last on that run, I was uh, doing my arithmetic in, in the sense that uh, it doesn't matter how quick you do the first car, it's how quick you touch the second car. And I looked at Wolfso, who did nine seconds, then, the, then the, uh, the Icelander did eight and a half seconds. I thought, bloody hell, they're going quite fast. And uh, I did it in seven point whatever it was. So it's a sprint, really? So it's basically a sprint. But um, unfortunately, the second car didn't go over. It actually shows the workmanship of the British cars, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but the thing is, I got it up, and uh, I was using the, the fame tacky from Scotland, the one I shook hands with the Queen and couldn't let go. And I, in fact, couldn't let go of the bar. <laughs> so when I wanted to change my hands into the, into the, from the pull position to the push position, I couldn't let go of the bar quick enough. And I think that could have cost me turning the car over, unfortunately. But uh, all in all, very pleased and very fortunate to win. By unhappy chance, most of your bad events seem to be happening at the very beginning of this competition, don't yeah, they? Yeah, but it gives the Dutch a false sense of security, doesn't it, really? But um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, and uh, the next event's the, uh, I think it's the Crucifix event. And um, again, with the long levers, I'm not uh, technically or uh, mechanically efficient. And I'm not looking forward to it one little bit. <laughs> well, good luck anyway, Jack. Thank you, fine. Here in Holland, 13 kilogram cheeses take the place of weights in this lift, and it's an event for which nature has certainly not designed long-armed fellas like Jeff Capes. Truth to tell, none of the competitors relishes this event. Simon Wolfse working up his concentration. The aim is to lock out the arms horizontally, and the Dutch officials have insisted on a palms-down stance, which makes a tough event even tougher. Each of these cheeses weighs 28 pounds and gets heavier by the second. And Wolf's time, 36.3 seconds. Now let's see if that explosive character John Paul Sigmarsson can tame that power and do the mental blocking out of the pain of this cruelly demanding event. 36.3 to beat, but he's a long-armed fellow as well. Now, John Paul reckons he can do over a minute, but this comes at the end of a long, hard day. Oh! Oh! And that's the end of the road for Sigmarsson. But he's still acting up, proving that ham does go with cheese. So Wolfs is still in the lead, although not looking entirely happy about it. And now it's Jack Hines' turn. And Jack's looking a bit apprehensive, although he usually does very well in this sort of event. And Jack's effort was over before it even started. A complete failure there. And a major upset in an event in which he started as one of the favorites. Jack, what happened there? The problem there was um, the, the hands had to be held palm down, right? which I, due to an injury, a shoulder injury, I'm, I'm, I can't lock the, the arms. Other way, I'm, I can last for a minute or so, but that way. And the, the, the Holland uh, officials here changed the rules and said that they had a lot of problems with people doing it that way, with infringing the rules. But uh, they just uh, wouldn't allow me to do it that time, um, but still. How do you feel about it? Pretty bad? Uh, I feel disgusted with that, yeah. and really, you know. Because it's an event that you've done exceptionally well in oh, the past. Oh, yeah, I could beat the whole lot of these boys here if they let me do the palms up. No, no problems. But they just wouldn't hear of that? No, no. no. Probably heard I was able to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> still, you're still smiling, Jack? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, after that disaster for Hind, let's see how De Vrucht fares. He's an enormously powerful man with massive shoulder development and looking better with every event. 
The big butcher is a rather dour individual, so he might well have the dogged sort of temperament to match his giant strength. The referee keeps an eagle eye on them, a real stickler for the rules, and the frucht is suffering. But this is going to be a good time, 41.6 seconds, the best so far. Jeff Capes hates this sort of event, and there's little he can do to improve his performance. It's all about arm length. Well, plenty of encouragement from Jack Hind, and Jeff will be hoping for at least 30 seconds. Arm straight, warning. And a warning as his arms begin to drop. And that's it, 27 seconds. Well, that eventful and controversial last event of day one has ended up with the scoreboard looking like this. Jack Hind obviously bitterly disappointed in an event in which he had hoped to do extremely well, coming bottom there. Jeff Capes, I suppose, in his heart of hearts, expected to be bottom, so I suppose his five points here include four bonus points. But as you can see at the top of the scoreboard here, Simon Wolfsel from Holland and also Kies de Vrucht really doing exceptionally well. So at the end of day one, the two Dutchmen on their home territory share the top honours. De Vrucht, two points clear of Wolfse, with young Sigmarsson still poised there in third place. Jeff, the shades of evening have found most of the other athletes a little bit uh, disgruntled, but I noticed you had a big smile on your face at the end of that. Oh yes, because uh, in three pre previous competitions I come last in each one and only gain one point, but uh, somehow I've come fourth in this and gained five points. Uh, but I enjoyed it and um, going tomorrow, what, uh, three points behind Wolfsa. Last year I was five points behind Wolfsa. But um, the, the big Dutchman, he, he's in a good position to do well tomorrow. Jeff, at the very start of the day, you rated this young Icelander, John Paul Sigmarsson, as being a real threat to you. Do you still rate him that way? I still rate uh, the Icelander because I've got some very good friends in Iceland and each one of them is strong, you know. And if they send an Icelander, he's going to be good. But you're going off to bed in a much happier frame of mind. Yeah, I'm going for a swim, then I'm going for a sauna, then I'm going to have a pint, and then I'm going to bed. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Arnhem bears a few scars of the desperate events that made it a place whose very name still arouses deep emotions and the memories of the high courage, the pity, and the futility of war. The bridge too far is still a vital crossing of the Rhine, but the echoes of wartime events are muted now. And as the second day of hard competition begins, time for assessment with the doctor in charge, Dr. Case Close. Dr. Close, as the physician supervising this event, I'm sure a lot of people talk to you about the kind of punishment that these heavy athletes put their bodies to. Mm. How dangerous is this? I don't think it's dangerous because uh, all the athletes are well trained uh, they're doing the training daily and I don't think there's any danger. Okay, there are always injuries but you can see yourself why. You can't do it and I can't do it but they can do it and they know themselves how far they can go. At the World's Strongest Man competition in America I noticed that everybody seems to be gulping oxygen all the time. Here in Europe we hardly bother. Why is that? We do have oxygen here but we, we didn't use it. I think we use it uh, at, the, at the flower uh, game. I think we use it there. But it's but always standing by. It's always standing by. And so are you. <laughs> okay. And a pensive mood grips the competitors as they cast anxious eyes on the cold rolled steel bars from 10 to 19 millimeters in thickness which they must bend. This is an event in which Jeff Capes has never been beaten. <laughs> Kees de Vrucht looks as if he's trained hard for every event. And Leif Vigholm of Sweden completes this trio of perhaps the most powerful men in this competition. And just look at that. Capes makes nonsense of this 15 millimeter bar. I've actually lifted a bar after it's been given the Capes treatment and at the bend it's hot to the touch from the violence of the friction. Well, de Vrucht made it and so does Vigholm. <laughs> Wolfse, Sigmarsson and Stettler on the 16mm bars. <laughs> <laughs> 
Get ready. Run. Two. Three. Start. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come while the young Icelander looks pretty impressive in everything he attempts. The happy-go-lucky Stettler has, I fancy, come here to enjoy himself, and he's a wee bit out of his depth among these mighty men. Sigmarsson struggles on. But he runs out of time. Ah, now, John Paul, there's no need to straighten it out. <laughs> and that look from Steckler says it all. The 16mm bar again, and it's Vigholm, Capes and De Vrucht. One, two, three, start! Come on, Jeff. Come on, Jeff. Come on. And again, Capes gives it the treatment. <laughs> the psychological effect on the other competitors of that sort of explosive power must be devastating. <laughs> De Brucht here is relying on sheer strength. Just look at that upper arm development. Come on, Come on, The moment strong men dread, and Bigholm looks alarmed, and no wonder, it looked like a sickening injury. Bad. That's bad. So can you tell us what's, what's happening? The, the rupture of uh, the, the musculus deltoideus. On the, and he, told, he just told us that he heard him. Jeff Capes said he heard it standing yeah, beside him, yeah. heard it go. Yeah. Now how, how serious is that for the rest of the competition? It's too, pain, uh, too painful to now to examine it, so we first cool it and then uh, we see. But I'm You're not very hopeful? No, I'm not very hopeful. Neither is he. Well, that's had a depressing effect on everyone, the man looking favourite for the title out of the reckoning. One, two, three, start! The final is between Jeff Capes and Seaman Wolfser on the 17mm bars. Now, nobody expects them to double these over. The real trick is to assess the degree of measured bend that should be enough. And Jeff thinks that one will do nicely. And it is enough to keep his unbeaten record, as that handshake from Seaman Wolfser acknowledges. Maximum points for Jeff Capes, Wolfser right behind him, Sigmarsson, where else but third? And for the first time, De Brucht way down the table. So let's see how all that affects the overall positions. And confirmation that the two Dutchmen are still there, first and second, but the real question must be whether De Brucht, who's looked rock solid, can take any further part in this competition, as Jeff Capes now begins to make his drive for the tape. The type of event where competitors have to load heavy objects onto a vehicle is by common consent the real man-killer of any strength competition. Whether it's uh, cement bags or beer kegs, or as in this case, 165-pound flour bags to be loaded onto these fancy carts. At the end of the day, it comes down to the same thing. A tremendous test of the athlete's strength, speed and endurance. First heat, Heinz Stettler versus John Paul Sigmarsson. Both fast and athletic, but Sigmarsson is the man with the real strength. And straight away you can see what the problem is in this event with all this flower flying about. And I'm joined now by Jeff Capes. Sigmarsson is very athletic, young fellow, isn't he? Very, very athletic and a uh, man to watch. Um, they've got a problem with the powder, though. It's so fine, it's getting into the breathing. And when it, with it being a, a calisthenic activity, a lung event, as well as strength and power, um, it's obviously restricting the breathing and, and getting into the lungs. Now, I've um, heard you say that there's a sort of wall of pain that they run into, isn't there? Yeah, there's a wall of pain uh, in normal sense. I mean, this is totally ridiculous with the powder and everything going into your lungs at the same time. It could just literally stop you dead. It's not a good event. Um, it is a very, very awkward thing to do. 
I'm not looking forward to it one little bit. Well, Stetler reckons that six bags will do him, but Sigmarsson goes storming on, never say die. And it's an impressive time, 2 minutes, 17.5 seconds. And it's bloody beautiful time again. Uh, just time for the dust to settle, and we're into heat two. Jack Hind of Scotland, no fears here for the former farmer's boy in this event, but he might have expected a solo run. But here's a major surprise. In spite of that sickening injury in the last event, the surprise Jack Hind finds himself up against, large as life, Kes de Vrucht. Now, Jeff, this needs some explaining. Here's a man who seemed in mortal agony just a few minutes ago, and here he is going in this really rough event. Yeah. Well, it really depends on what muscle group is actually uh, hurt. Um, I understood it was his deltoid, but apparently it's pectoral major, which is the front two uh, chest muscles. And uh, apparently, you know, it, it hasn't affected uh, his delts at all. But unfortunately, he's having a bit of a problem, but he's giving it a go. And uh, he's going to get that point. I mean, it's a, it's a crucial point. He's just got to load that. If he loads it, then he'll get a point. Jack Hind plods on, but the real drama is in the other lane, and De Vrucht's painful courage. So, I mean, he's obviously in agony, and uh, he's really feeling the pain. So, I mean, we're, we all want him to load that bag. And he has loaded it, and that's true grit, but it must surely be his last contribution to this whole competition. And let's not forget Scotland's hero, yep, Jack Hind. Yep, Jack Hind. Well, Jack's a doer character, I mean, obviously from Scotland. And um, he's previously a, a land worker, a farmer, and uh, he said, oh, you know, it's just a wee little baggers and we'll just pop them up there. Look at him just slinging them around. And he's, he's a, a character in his own right, you know, a phenomenal, dear, uh, typical Scotsman. <laughs> and Jeff breaks off from commentating to urge Jack on. Come on! Come on! And the bold boy who even manages a minor sprint to the finish. Jack Hind, you're a hero. <laughs> what was that like? It was, um, it was difficult. The, as soon as you got the bag up there, you choked the, the flour. I well, got a job at the mall with the, sifting the flour. You? <laughs> Were you aware of Jeff Capes roaring you on there? Oh, yeah, who wouldn't it be? It was terrific, though, wasn't yeah. it? And we've just heard that you're in the lead. That was the best time so far. How about that? That was good. Hmm. Very good. And Jeff goes solo in this event. Leif Vigholm of Sweden is out because of a leg injury he received in the very first event, the boat time. It just got worse and worse. And look at the way Jeff handles these huge sacks. He goes at tremendous speed. And of course, his six feet five inches height helps him heft the sacks onto the cart. But this event is really about character and determination. Well, plenty of vocal support from Jack Hind, and this is going to be a very good time. One minute, 23.69 seconds. A bit of British solidarity there, Jeff. Uh, you roared on Jack, he was doing the same for you. We well, got to with the only two Englishmen here. Well, sorry, Jack, <laughs> Scotsman. I'll let you off. And then, well, I'm half Scots now, so. Oh. <laughs> Terrific time, 123, something like that. Uh, very happy, 123. One well inside a target I set myself. But uh, the big problem is, is in fact the flower. Getting into your breathing apparatus, you know? They're very, very difficult. And uh, obviously, I'm pleased with the time. And. Uh, I need those bloody points. Can you see anyone beating that? Simon, he's good. Very explosive, very dear character. <laughs> now the Austrian rock lifter, Franz Bierbaum, versus the local man, Simon Wolfse. And the hopes of the home crowd must now rest on the brawny shoulders of the former stevedore. 
Both is fast, very athletic, and fiercely determined. Bierbaum is strong but pretty immobile and he looks as if he would prefer a gluten-free diet rather than eating all his flour. Wolfse has 1 minute 23.69 to beat but he's slowing down and he's not going to beat that mark. It looks to me as if he's injured his forearm, but isn't this extraordinary? Despite the fact that the Dutchman is the biggest threat to his title, nobody's shouting encouragement louder than Jeff Capes. The pain of this sort of endeavour bonds competitors together. 1 minute 57.25 for Wolfser, not good enough to beat Capes. A quick chorus of rural Britannia between Capes and Hind, British solidarity in a foreign field. Well, if ever an event was a test of courage and character, it was the flower loading. The courage of Kees de Vroeg taking part despite that terrible injury. The doggedness of Jack Hine to gain that third place. But above all, the courage and character of Jeff Capes to throw down that gauge that no one else was able to pick up and gain for him the maximum points. A dramatic effect on the overall scoreboard with de Vroeg dropping out of contention. But pressing Seaman Wolfs are hard now, and just one point behind is the reigning champion, Jeff Capes. And there's trouble at mill. The Paltrock windmill, that is. The log lift has already taken its toll of Jack Hind and Heinz Steckler as we join it. Vigholm and De Vrucht have both retired hurt, so Jeff Capes finds himself taking on powerlifting specialists. And here he tackles the 125 kilogram log, and it's success for Jeff. And now, at the same weight, Franz Bierbaum. He's a champion at the Austrian national sport of rock lifting, and he's done well in the early stages of the log lift. He's very determined, but the real problem here is the awkwardness of rolling the log into the position where it can be pressed skywards. And that looks like the end of the road for Beerbar. Now, with the log weighing 130 kilograms, here comes the Viking warrior himself, John Paul Sigmerson. He gives it everything, tremendous effort, and looks pretty pleased with himself. By the way, there's no truth in the rumour that he's auditioning to be the next Tarzan. Now, as Wolfser steps forward, you can see that heavy strapping on his arm. How much will he be handicapped by the injury? There's no shortage of local support. And Wolfser's looking good, 130 kilograms. But he's suffering. Jeff Capes at 130 kilograms, that's 286 pounds, and he needs this lift to keep in touch with Wolfson. Now it's worth reminding ourselves that Jeff Capes was a shot putter, not a weightlifter, and neither his training nor his physique equip him for this kind of event. Ominously, it looks as if Jeff has injured his shoulder and that failure means he'll have to settle for third place, which could be crucial in the overall competition. John Paul Sigmerson tackling 135 kilograms. And he cleans the log to the shoulder very efficiently. But it's the next stage that's the real killer. And just look at that effort. Each competitor has 90 seconds. Within that time can have as many attempts as he wishes. 
and Sigmarsson is determined to keep in contention. But it's too much. And he decides to chop the log while he's about it. So the Icelandic showman will settle for a share of the lead, unless, of course, Simon Wolfser can succeed at 135 kilograms, which would give him first place. Everything to go for here, and even with an injured right arm, he's the sort of character who seems able to produce that explosion of power when he's needed. Struggling a bit, but it's a good lift. And Joy is unconfined in the Dutch camp as their man wins the event and puts terrific pressure on Jeff Kicks. And it's getting to be survival of the fittest. Wolfse gets the maximum points, Sigmarsson seven, and Jeff Capes can be pretty pleased with that third place and six points. With only one more event, the overall scoreboard says it all. Wolfse is three points clear of Jeff Capes, so it's nail-biting time as we head for the grand finale. If you've ever wondered what the sporting expression having an early bath really means, well, this could be it. The final event of this whole competition. It's a tug of war, and between the competitors lies this rather muddy Dutch canal, offering the possibility of a spectacular splash finish to each of these competitions. This is an event that uh, Jeff Capes really must win to give himself any chance of retaining his European title. The sight of this very special tug of war resembles a clearing station as the injuries begin to catch up with the tired competitors. Case de Vrucht thinks of what might have been. Leif Bigholm is one of the walking wounded, but only just. And because of their infirmities, Capes and Beerbaum get walkovers in the first round. First tug and the dashing Swiss bobsleigh man, Heinz Stettler, looks to me like a fellow preparing to take a dip as he confronts that solid citizen, Simon Wolfson. And Mr. Stettler doesn't seem too disgruntled by his sudden immersion. Jeff, you're pretty good at doing your sums and working out the permutations. How do you see this final event? <laughs> A tough event. Um, on permutation sense, um, I've got to win to win. And if Simon finishes first, or second, or third, he wins. But if I finish, uh, if he finishes fourth, then he loses. But if I finish fourth, <laughs> it goes on like that. Um, no, he, he has a more better chance than I than to win because he had a three points advantage. And uh, with three uh, injuries, proper injuries, to three competitors, it makes it far more easier that, than me to win. But um, all in all, it's been a great competition. I've enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I got slightly injured in the, the log lift. And uh, it doesn't give me incentive to go into this other arm exercise uh, with the same uh, venom I would do normally. But knowing you, you'll battle it out to the very end. Oh, yeah. He's not, he's not won it yet. And, uh, you know, I'm from Lincolnshire, mate, and uh, we don't give anybody nothing. Just like the Scots. Good luck. Thank you. Jack Hind versus John Paul Sigmarsson. And whether it's just a sensible precaution or a presentiment of things to come, the Icelander has removed his glasses. So perhaps he's reconciled to making a bit of a splash in this confrontation. Jack Hind, of course, could be a very important part of Jeff Cape's hopes of retaining his title. If he beats off the challenge of the likes of Sigmarsson, Beerbaum, and even Wolfse, he could help Jeff's cause enormously. Come on, Jack, you got him! Push! Get him! Come on, Jack, come on! Push him! That must go down as game set and match to Jack Hyman. Now in the second round, Capes must beat Wolfser and win the final. Wolfser would also have to lose the pull off for third and fourth places for Capes to retain his title. And so we come to the confrontation between Capes and Wolfser. It's a very ironical situation here. Most people reckon Wolfser has no chance against Capes in this head to head. 
But what this is really all about is whether Capes can beat Wolfse by a clear margin of three points. And an elegant header into the canal by Seaman Wolfse. Jack Hind takes on Franz Bierbaum, and they look well matched, both chunky and determined. Jack obviously hasn't quite recovered from his exertions against Sigmarsson. And he makes quite a splash. Victory to Franz Bierbaum. Now then, Jeff Capes must beat Bierbaum to get his maximum eight points. And then it would be down to Jack Hind to beat Simon Wolfser for Jeff to retain his title. Jack Hind, you weren't expecting a double pneumonia when you came to Holland, were you? Yeah, I, do. I think I must have it with the time I get finished here. Yeah, didn't expect to go in there, but um, it caught me in the hop. The two rounds was quite, you know, didn't uh, quite recover for the first one. From what I reckon now, you could be doing it for Britain because you'll go in the next one against Wolfson. Yeah. If you beat him, you could guarantee the championship for uh, Jeff Case. Yeah. yeah, it's a daunting task, isn't it? Still, if, that, if that's the way it is, I'll need to make a try. Give it a go. One for Britain? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeff needs to win this heat against Franz Bierbaum to make all these possibilities have any chance of having a bearing on the result. <laughs> and that's what happens when 23 stones of Lincolnshire brawn and determination get down to business. Jeff, it must be very ironic for you standing watching this. It all depends on this one, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, I think Seaman's won it because he's a lot stronger than Jack in the legs. He's a powerlifter and he wants to win it. Obviously, he wants to win it. And if he wants it enough, he'll win. But Jack wants to do it for you, doesn't That's he? Right. Yeah. So, this is the real crunch. Seaman Wolfser against Jack Hyde. If Jack can beat Wolfser, it would even up the points and Capes would snatch it because he would have more first places. The tension is almost unbearable. Jack's really trying, isn't he? He's trying, all right. But he's tiring, too. So it means you've lost your European Championship. Unfortunately, yeah. But uh, we live to fight another day, don't we? How do you feel? Um, I'm fine. You know, obviously a little bit disappointed, but uh, uh, there's a lot of swings and roundabouts, and uh, I think there's more roundabouts and swings for me. But uh, tough competition. Oh, very good, tough competition. And he, he came second to me last year, and uh, you can't say a lot more than that. I think. Is it? A great finale, and the final scoreboard shows just how desperately close it was at the finish. After two days of fierce but sporting competition, at the top, Seaman Wolfser by one point, holding off Jeff Capes. And Mr. Mike Fitzsimons, Assistant General Manager of Homelink, presents the trophy to Europe's strongest man, 1983. From Holland, Seaman Wolfser.